This is episode number eight with Andrew Kovacs. Welcome to the Archaeologist Talks. The Archaeologist is a collaborative platform that focuses on showcasing worldwide design projects from students and young professionals. This time around, though, we're creating a space to talk about design with the leading architects and designers around the world. Our goal for these conversations is to inspire and influence the young community. We're going to bring in tips, personal insights, and different perspectives of what design really is to each one of us. And I'm your host, Maria Flores. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're with Andrew Kovacs. He is an academic professor and an architect. He is currently a faculty member at UCLA and the creator and curator of Archive of Affinities. It is a website devoted to the collection and display of architectural B-sides. So Andrew's work has also been published in many books like Domus, Pigeon, Project, Prospecta, and many more. And he actually has a very recent work that all deals with colors and 3D collages, which we talk about in the podcast. We also talk about the Archive of Affinities, which is the longest project that he has ever worked on, and all his research and work emerges from it. It is a project with no deadline, no client, and no budget. Therefore, it is a project that has an outside imposition, and it is free to be a project of pure passion. In the episode, we talk about how he started the project, how it has affected his career, And he also describes the relationship he has found along useless images and scraps to the architectural field and how this archive can be of great help to designers to understand architecture better. We talk about his process, how he finds an image, and then how he proceeds to scan it and publish it. We talk about everything that he has learned through Archive of Affinities. And finally, he talks about why architecture should be playful and communicative instead of boring and dull. Don't miss out this episode, guys. It's going to be amazing. And let the talk begin. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm fine. So thank you so much for being in the podcast. I'm very excited about this conversation. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for asking me to do it. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself, about your longest project. Go ahead. Okay, so um, my name is uh, Andrew Kovacs. I'm an architectural designer and educator based in Los Angeles. Um, and the longest project that you mentioned is the kind of longest mm-hmm. project that I've been working on since um, I was a graduate student. It's a project called um, Archive of Affinities. Um, so this project has no deadline, no client, and no budget. Um, and effectively, it's become... Uh, an image collection project. Um, and this image collection project um, then takes its place on various social media platforms, mm-hmm. but also acts as a kind of uh, crucible or origin point or uh, the groundwork for the, my, the, the design work of my design studio, Office Kovacs. Okay, so you mentioned that you started it when you were a graduate student, right? Why did you start it? What was the project about? Like, what was the brief, basically? Uh, there was no brief. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I just kind of, I was just going into the library and um, looking up things that I was interested in mm-hmm. um, or things that were related to projects that I was working on at the time as a graduate mm-hmm. student. Um, and then just like looking for, um, work that I had not seen before. Um, and so Mm -hmm. this was in 2010. And so at that time, um, you know, like it's true, you can find everything on the internet, but sometimes (laughs) you can't. Um, and so, um, I would be, I would hear someone mention an architect or a project and I would become curious in that architect or that architect or that project. And I maybe would not be able to find certain images or documentation of either that architect or that project or that artist Mm -hmm. online. So I would go to the library and then I would kind of uh, scan images from books or old media or magazines, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
And so that's kind of how the project started. There wasn't really a brief. It was really like for a long time, I was collecting images and saving them from the internet. So like this, like, you know, in the, er in the 2000s, like before there was Pinterest um, yeah. or like Tumblr, I was just kind of, I had a hard drive on a folder um, or folder on a hard drive rather um, uh, listed um, by architects names. Right. And so I was kind of mm -hmm. s s sort of generating this image bank from images that I found on the internet. And then at some point, rather than uh, saving images from the internet, I started to upload images onto the mm -hmm. internet. Right. And, you know, after doing this for some time, what did you get out of it? What did you learn from this process of basically curating all these images? Yeah, I think um, that's a great question. I think in one, at one aspect, I started to, or at one level, I started to refine my own visual sensibility or my own visual mm -hmm. preferences or things that I like. Um, and, and, and also kind of uh, branch out of a typical understanding of, say, what is architecture, right? Mm -hmm. Or kind of looking, looking for work, architectural work, that was not necessarily in the center of the discipline, but on the periphery. So what, and, and yeah. I, and, and at, at, for, for a long period of time, I would call those, those types of projects like architectural B-sides. So mm -hmm. not like the mm -hmm. hits or like the mm -hmm. A-sides, but rather the things, the projects are the work or the content on the flip side. So B-sides. And so I was kind of, I was looking for um, work made by artists that had an architectural resonance or for example, work by people trained as architects, but then didn't work as ar architects. So someone like Saul mm -hmm. Stein, who was trained as an architect, but famously drew the covers of New Yorker magazine. Um, so I was kind of, or, or say like lesser known works by well-known architects or, mm -hmm. um, different, different views or images of well-known projects. So, mm -hmm. um, I, that's like, so, so if maybe that was a kind of brief that I made for myself at some mm -hmm. point, like in terms of looking for the content, but what it also, what it, what it really did, I think was, like I said, at, at, from the outset, um, kind of helped me refine my own visual sensibility or preferences for what I'm drawn to. And so, you know, affinity is a nice word because it can mean one of two things, something that I personally have a, a predilection for or a general mm -hmm. liking towards, mm -hmm. or one thing that might have a relationship to something else. So mm -hmm. kind of um, almost comparative um, format. So, yeah, I, I think that like, you know, also it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm still kind of learning from doing it. Um, yeah. Um, and I and it's it's a project that I also really enjoy doing because it mm -hmm. forces me to go look for architecture that I haven't seen before or architecture exactly. related things that I haven't seen before. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm still learning. Yeah. And I was actually going to ask you about that because I saw one of your lectures in Berlin where you were talking about these images as scraps, junks, fragments, accidents. And I wanted to know why specifically you would use the, that, those types of words on those images. But you kind of already mentioned that th they were things that you couldn't really find normally. And to you, they were very valuable, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's where the term like B-sides comes yeah. back, right? Like, so not like, or, you know... Um, also, I would go to like used bookstores a lot, not just the mm -hmm. library, but mm -hmm. but it was kind of just things that existed already in the public domain, but were not necessarily on the public domain of the internet. Exactly. So how do you go about selecting an image for the curation process? Like what image specifically are you looking for? Yeah, there's uh, no direct answer to that. <laughs> um, Anything so, you find attractive. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it also depends, you know, kind of what I'm working on, like with mm -hmm. um, my design studio. So, um, I don't know, like, you know, recently I've become interested in um, advertisements that appear in mm -hmm. architectural magazines from the second half of the 20th century. And so... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that also comes out of an interest in Bernard Schumi's advertisements for architecture, but mm -hmm. also kind of how, say, these advertisements frame everyday mundane architectural products in a different yeah. sort of way. And so, you know, when I'm maybe for the advertisements, the, the thing that I'm looking for are kind of old magazines, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty straightforward. Um, but other times I just go to the library and I just sort of sift through the stacks and pick off, pick, pick out books that I find appealing and then flip through them. And then whatever I find appealing from those books, I scan. And then after that, I sort of, um, edit them slightly in Photoshop and then upload them. So there's a kind mm -hmm. of, um, a process. gradual process. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, how things are selected, I mean, it, 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 it maybe depends on what I'm working on at the moment or, mm -hmm. you know, may, you know it, 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 early on in doing the Project of Archive of Affinities, I was interested in maybe like kind of posting them in a certain way where they would kind of tell some kind of narrative or have a story or kind of mm -hmm. like use, use the logic of comparison to kind of bring out um, s sort of features of things that I was finding. But then mm -hmm. at some point, at some point, the, the collection of all these images became material to say, make other images, right? right. So for, that's where so, your office comes in. Yeah. So, I mean, even at a very kind of speculative level. So for example, like I was collecting a large number of floor plans, uh, just from whatever floor plans I would find that I would find appealing, I would collect mm -hmm. them or find them, collect them, scan them, uh, mm -hmm. slightly edit them, and then upload them. And then at some point I took these plans and started to use them as for either fragments, parts, or holes to assemble uh, new floor plans, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that kind of, that sort of method also translated into a bunch of different um, directions. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I mean in, in some ways, like the like Archive of Affinities is twofold. At one level, it's simply just an image collection project, but at another level, though that, that collection of images then becomes um, the material to say, produce new images. Exactly. And so how has you know, the Archive of Affinities helped you in your architectural practice? What the projects that you do how has it changed after you started doing the Archive of Affinities? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I guess I don't really know how to answer it because before <laughs> I was doing Archive of Affinities, I was sort of either a student or working for other people. So, right. um, but, but in some ways, Archive of Affinities is, is its own kind of project. And mm -hmm. it's a project that um, is important to me in terms of, say, understanding what the discipline of architecture is or what constitutes exactly. the discipline of architecture. So I think it, it, in that sense, it's, it's always kind of, um, it, it may not seem like it's directly influencing a lot of the projects, but I think like the method for sure, for yeah. sure of say collect, of collecting things and then using those things to make other things has found its way into, um, the design practice in, in just in terms of, a, of simple things like using ready-mades or found objects, right? Yeah. Um, or, 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 and, and altering those and, and, and using those to say, generate proposals. Yeah. Because I've seen some of the models that, that you make and they almost look like a collage of found objects sure. put together to represent an idea, which I, which I love. They absolutely, that's exactly what they are. They're collage. Mm -hmm. They're sort of three dimensional collage collages i mean and that that changes depending on say the status of the project like is it just a competition right that mm -hmm. or is it like you know or for example for like the coachella project 
Like yeah. we made a, n- a number of different um, models that, you know, first started off pretty conceptual and uh, collage like that gradually became refined over a process. Mm-hmm. But in, in other projects that I've done, for example, like um, the renovation of an Airstream from a, from being a kind of leisure space to being a mobile shop, we used found objects um, as the, the the apparatus upon which you could hang something to be displayed, mm, right? So, yeah. so, so I, I think, or, or like, you know, in, in, in the Coachella project, ready-mades, uh, the ready-made element was um, uh, road reflectors that you would find on the meet in the meet in the in the in the in, in between the lanes on a highway, right? And yeah. so we use ro- road reflectors to basically uh, generate a grid uh, mm-hmm. that would reflect the spines of a cacti, right? Mm-hmm. Or, for example, in some of the one-to-one installations that we've been producing, like we'll, you know, use pre-existing windows that we just find in a kind of architectural salvage yard. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have I have two questions, and I guess this is a two part question. I guess um, the first one is: Do you actually have the idea that this is going that, that this project was going to become such a big impact on students and architects? Because I mean, you have you're on every platform basically, and it's kind of like yeah. an archive that people can go into and look for stuff. And second. How do you think that this publishing, this, your work in doing this is going to affect the architectural field? Yeah, uh, great questions. Um, <laughs> Thought-provoking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I guess maybe the best way to answer that would be like, you know, um, I didn't realize, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure what the actual impact is, but I guess yeah. I, I thought that if... Um, I was interested in something, maybe others would be as well, right? Not to say exactly. that that would that would that would be a a, a a really huge impact, but maybe if I was looking for something that or that maybe someone else was as well. So that's kind of why there was the idea of say sharing it on the internet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like you know the impact for the architectural field, I mean that sounds quite intense, but. Um, I don't. I mean, if anything, hopefully, um, the project, the project of Archive of Affinities, creates a broader audience for the field of architecture, right? Mm-hmm. So hopefully, it widens who is interested in architecture. So it's not. So at the end of the day, it's not just say architects sharing images with architects, but rather broadening the overall uh, interest in who might be in, into architecture. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think like you know, architecture is not just for architects. It really should be exactly. kind of for everyone. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, and and it could also be an archive, like how you're saying, for designers, not really architects, people that are just looking for pictures of you know things that they like, etc. Um, so, Absolutely, yeah, I think I think it's really cool. Like. Yeah, I think it's not just architects, but yeah, artists, designers, people yeah. interested in visual, visual culture, fashion, mm-hmm. um, you know, also like the different time periods, especially with the advertisements, right? Like you can really see that certain things are from like the 1980s or like the 1970s, right? So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, ult- I mean, ultimately, like it's, it's funny because Archive of Affinities is in a way a very personal project, right? Of yeah. kind of looking, co- looking or collecting these images that um, will somehow hopefully become reference material for the work I do. But at the same time, I think um, other people clearly find it interesting and hopefully that helps broaden the view or the interest in the world of architecture. Yeah. I just thought about the fact that it is almost like a personal Pinterest, you know, like a, yeah. like an inspiration board. Yeah, I mean, for for sure, it's a kind of inspiration board, yeah. a mood board. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, like I think there are parallels into the art art world and architecture world. For example, I don't know if you know this book called "The Heroic Period of Modern Architecture." 
by yeah. Allison and Peter Smithson. I would look it up. It's a really amazing book. Um, I think it's made in the, you know, uh, it's made, I think, around 1980. I don't, I could be wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, it does, what, what the book, it's a kind of pro, it's a proto blog format in a book. And so the, the Smithsons, Allison and Peter Smithson, um, look at the heroic period of modern architecture at the beginning of the 20th century and effectively collect images, dates, and authors. And that's all the book is, right? So the book mm -hmm. itself, is a kind of like blog format in a book. Or artists like Gerhard Richter and his Atlas, which is an, another kind of amazing book of visual references. Or say someone like Saul, the artist Saul LeWitt uh, and his, uh, his, his book called uh, Autobiography, which also is also a kind of like proto-Instagram format in a book where you have kind of nine, a nine square grid on each page that mm -hmm. sort of captures images of daily life. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, I think for sure at one level it is this kind of, yeah, personal Pinterest mood board of like architecture that I like. Um, but at the same time, it also becomes this resource um, that can be mobilized in different ways. Awesome. Now, I have a question that I, someone has asked you this before, and I'm asking it again because I find it very... I don't know. I, I found it funny when they asked. It was, okay. um, it was a question that said, architecture is supposed to be something serious and mm -hmm. your work is very playful. Like, what do you think about those types of opinions? I guess, um, I think, yeah, architecture is very, very serious. It is a very serious <laughs> uh, field and discipline and buildings are very serious. But I think buildings can also be fun and playful. Um, and, and I think if they're fun, playful, inviting, they might, again, also reach a broader audience or a broader yeah, appeal exactly. uh, mm -hmm. of people that might not otherwise be interested in architecture. Um, at the same time, um, I like to have fun and enjoy what I'm doing. So I mm -hmm. want to make the fun. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think if, if so much of architecture is like super serious and actually rather dull most of the time, the small part of it that can be fun or playful, I would like to kind of be involved with that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I agree. Um, do, you, do you have anything that you wish people understood better about Archive of Affinities? Because as any long-term project, hard-working project, there's some things that people don't really quite get. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, um, I think I have, I'm, I'm always asking that question to myself in a way, <laughs> like, um, like, what is it I'm really kind of doing here with this project? Because, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's something that I, that, you know, I, um, it almost like it, it the project kind of share something every day on the internet. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's not necessarily to say I'm working on it every day, um, but it's also, it's been a project that just kind of started for fun and has sort of morphed into all these different um, avenues. And so it's in, in that sense become a very fruitful uh, type of project for me. So yeah. it's a project that I want to keep doing, um, even though I make almost no, I make no money from it. Um, I, you know, it, there's no kind of client, there's no deadline. So it's a strange kind of thing. Um, so it really is like a project of pure passion or of fun. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure there's something that I would say that people are missing or they're not getting because also I'm trying to figure out what are the different avenues that the projects can go, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, when you do something out of passion, not just to get money out of it, I think that some people might get almost offended by it. And they're like, why, why are you not getting any money out of it? But you're like, I do this for myself, you know? Yeah, it's for fun. I mean, I mean, but it's also because I'm like, you know, I'm just genuinely curious and I want to yeah. see architecture that I haven't seen before. And, um, or, you know, like, or I become obsessive with a certain type of 
of architecture, right? Like say roadside mm -hmm. architecture, or mm -hmm. um, I become like obsessed with a certain aspect of, of things. And so then I'm like really trying to find out everything I possibly can about yeah. uh, that type of work. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it, I mean, I, th I think at the end of the day, like it really, it really is just about also like training my own visual sensibility and kind of what I like. And I don't know, you know, if, if, if it's true that practice makes perfect, like the mm -hmm. more you kind of look at images or sort of filter kind of your own design taste or sensibility through like looking at images, I think you will start to notice that you, you do kind of start to refine sort of what you yeah, like. And exactly. What you don't like. Mm -hmm. Now no. you mentioned that um, you had an installation for Coachella, right? Which yeah. it almost came from the archive of affinities, that mentality. How, what was your experience building this installation? Well, I, it was an amazing experience. Um, it was it was a kind of long process. Um, so the project for Coachella that was realized are uh, seven large sculptures that are meant to look like cacti or sort of mm -hmm. abstract, reduced cacti that mm -hmm. are loosely arranged in a spiraling ring to form mm -hmm. a kind of to form a kind of plaza at the festival grounds. Um, at the base of each of the cacti towers, there, are, there, are, there is a stepped plinth for each of the towers, allowing users to sit and hang out, listen to music, meet friends, etc. And so kind of up close, um, the, the cacti are, are on each of their elevations are all uh, given a different color to provide mm -hmm. a fun and playful backdrop to produce an image um, and but from the distance it appears as a kind of sort of sprawling skyline so yeah. you know I think like um, you know a lot of people took photos with it uh, at the installation so using it as a backdrop and so um, that was certainly something we were interested in um, I don't know if you know about the Paul Smith wall here in LA have you heard of this no Phenomena. So it's, you know, the Paul Smith fashion store. Um, they have a store here in West Hollywood uh, where the wall, where they have a wall and it's all pink. And mm -hmm. people go there and take kind of countless amounts of selfies. Um, yeah. a, uh, pack pink, pink backdrop. But at the same time, you know, when people go visit the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, they also um, take all sorts of photos like pretending to hold up the tower, etc. Maybe you've seen some of these, right? And so I oh, think I did both that. you did that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've, I've done that. <laughs> so so both of these cases, the leaning tower and the Paul Smith wall, I think they it's it's a it's an it's a, 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 a part or it's a case where people are engaging with architecture in public yeah. in a very mm -hmm. different way than uh, with say other buildings, right? Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. so um, that was clearly a kind of interest. Um, but at the same time, you know, yeah, like so. So there is this kind of like um, interesting aspect that you know, tens of thousands of people took photos with uh, the cacti at Coachella and then shared them on the internet, right? So mm -hmm. in that sense, like architecture. Is, is sort of um, recirculating through each one of these people's individual profiles, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, hopefully in that sense also, maybe there is uh, an, an, an attempt at least to create a kind of broader audience for architecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, the Coachella Project embodied many different themes and aspects of, say, the work, um, that we have been producing over the last uh, number of years. That's amazing. Yeah, it was almost like a social backdrop and it was almost like the archive of affinities was in everyone's profiles. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, it's sort of funny. Um, but at the same time, like, I'm drawn to... Um, architects that also like other architects in the past 
that have aimed to say communicate to a broader audience. For example, mm -hmm. Robert Venturi and Denise Scott Brown and the book Learning from Las Vegas, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, how can kind of um, popular culture and architecture culture or pop culture and architecture culture kind of find a way to reconcile themselves? Yeah. Okay, now for the final question, and I ask this to everyone, what is a piece of advice that you want to give a current student or a recent graduate? Um, that's a tough question as well. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I guess I would say um, uh, find out what you're interested in and what you like and then just go, go after it 100%. You know, so find nice. like do what do what you want to do. Find out what you're interested in, what you're passionate about, what you really like, and what you enjoy doing about architecture, or you know, in a broad sense, design, art, etc. And just mm -hmm. go after it, like a hundred percent. That's that's what I would say. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I wish you the. Oh wait, I have another question because I want to sure. know this. I want to know what is your future goal with Archive of Affinities? Where do you see it in, like, let's say, the next five years? I think, I mean, I think I'll keep doing the project in terms of collecting images and sharing them. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really sure if, there, if I have, like, a super long or some grand plan for what can happen with it. Have you it. ever thought of publishing it, like, in a book format? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's, I've, it's been published in, in different variations, right? Like, so mm -hmm. it's been become art, become articles. I've published mm -hmm. a kind of, of a book of it. Uh, uh, when I did my thesis, I published it as a book format. Um, but right now there are like over, I think 5,000 images that I've shared. Mm -hmm. So if it, if, even if it's like one image per page, it's a very long book. <laughs> Yeah. So, exactly. so, so the, the publishing it as a book becomes, I mean, maybe it becomes a series of books, right. Mm -hmm. Or kind of like encyclopedia, uh, of sorts. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, and very expensive. <laughs> yeah. You should do it on Kickstarter. Maybe. Maybe on Kickstarter. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I think, I think like the, like publishing it as a book is a great idea. Um, I don't know, or, or sort of trying to find a different way to utilize web platforms with all the content yeah. is another um, kind of interest. Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck in your long process and the passionate project that you have in your hands. I'm very happy that you came today. So thank you so much for being so open also. For sure. Thank you for having me and um, I wish you the best of luck as well. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. We have many more on the way. I really hope that you enjoyed it. This was episode number eight with Andrew Kovacs. Have an amazing, amazing week. And if you're not following yet, you have to follow the archaeologists on social media. Do so right now. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest and many more. Also, you should go to our website, thearchaeologist.com. See you on the next episode, guys. Goodbye.